100 days with the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X. Do I regret keeping this laptop? Absolutely not. There are definitely negatives, but overall, I'm very happy with the laptop. Here are the topics that I'm going to cover in this video. Hopefully, it will help you decide whether this is the right laptop for you. I use it to write code and edit basic videos, as you can probably tell by this video, and other unmentionable activities. If you have no interest in a touchscreen, don't get this laptop or any other touchscreen laptops really. Unless you like checking yourself out while you work. When the screen is dark and the room is bright, the reflections gets pretty bad. What I'm showing here is the worst case condition. You can mitigate the reflection issue by adjusting the screen brightness, the ambient lighting, or just turn a little bit and change the angle. But I gotta say, you're probably gonna have to give up dark themes. The darker the screen, the more reflections show up. Let me mention that when the screen is towards the lighter colors, there are no reflections or at least minimal. I do want a touchscreen, so I'm willing to put up with the reflection issue. The reason is, as a computer guy, I have a variety of input devices to hold off carpal tunnel. I have a trackball, a split keyboard, and what is called a vertical mouse. I use touch to waste time on the internet. The 3K display looks great, at least to my untrained eyeballs. I like the 14.5 inch screen. This is one of two laptops that I know of that has a 14.5 inch screen. The other one is the ASUS VivoBook S14X. Who the hell named these things? Another thing that is great is the 1610 ratio for the extra vertical space. Lenovo claims almost 15 hours of battery life at the lowest brightness, which is great for my caving trips. However, during normal use, I get about 7 to 8 hours of battery life, which is pretty good. I'm happy with that. I expect this processor to be fast. The question is, can the laptop keep itself cool enough such that the processor operates at full speed? Well, let's find out. I'm going to kickstart a video rendering job. Before I start the job, the temperature of the CPU is 56 degrees. One minute in, the CPU is at 86 degrees and it's going at full speed. 10 minutes in, we're at 89 degrees and going strong. At the 20 minute mark, looks pretty much the same as before. 30 minutes, looks like everything is stabilized and the laptop is able to keep itself cool, so I'm going to stop the job now. In less than a minute or two, the laptop temperature went back down to the 50s. It looks like the cooling is pretty good. For better airflow, I do have this laptop sitting on top of a homemade riser, otherwise known as a piece of wood. This laptop is pretty much silent under low intensive use. When the fan was going at full blast, it's actually not loud at all. I measured it to be about 50 decibels, which according to this chart is like the humming of a refrigerator. And who doesn't love the refrigerator, right? When that video rendering job was running for half an hour, the top and bottom of the laptop felt lukewarm at best, which felt so much better than my thigh scorching Intel laptops. One thing I don't like about laptop keyboards is having to choose between holding the function key to use the F keys or holding the function key to use the multimedia shortcuts. This keyboard actually comes with a function lock key that works just like a cap locks. It lets me toggle between the two. I don't know if other laptops in this generation have it, but they all should. What I don't like are these baby size up down arrows. Also, the escape key, the delete key needs to be full size as well. The home, end, page up, page down are shared with the arrow keys. I was praising the function lock feature earlier. Well, there's nothing to toggle these four keys. I don't know about you, but these keys plus the arrows plus the escape and delete key are all high frequency keys for me. So I wish they were full sized. I like the size. It's not much bigger than a piece of printer paper. This is my OG Lenovo Yoga. This 14 inch laptop is actually smaller than the 13 inch Yoga. It is slightly wider than my 5 year old 13 inch HP Spectra. Thickness wise, they're about the same. 
I like that this laptop has a small notch at the bottom to improve airflow. So take that into account when looking at the measurements. The charger is about the size of a bar of soap. It weighs about three quarters of a pound or a third of a kilogram. It is USB-C, so I can just leech off of somebody else's power out there. I got 200 megabits internet and I'm using a Asus AX router sitting on the first floor. For the first test, I went to the part of the house furthest away from the router, which is one floor up and through two doors or walls, about 36 feet from the router. Let's see how that goes. The speed is good. For the second test, I went outside about 80 feet away, so the signal is going through my front door or the front window. I got some weird looks from the neighbors, but the speed is good. I have the 16 gig version, would have loved to get the 32 gig, but the price wasn't right. 16 gigs is enough for me for now, you should probably get the 32 gig if you can. Lenovo reserved 2 gigs of memory for the integrated AMD graphics card. So my 16 gig is really 14 gigs of usable memory. Since I have a dedicated GPU, I went into the BIOS and reduced memory to 512 megs. That is the minimum I can select. I'm not sure if that is a limitation for other manufacturers. I'm not crazy about losing half a gig forever, but I guess I, I'll live. So if you are considering laptops with 8 gigs of RAM, uh, don't. I did have a problem with the laptop. The V key doesn't register unless I hit it dead center. I was doing copy and paste and sometimes it doesn't paste. I was wondering what, what, what's going on. And then after a while, I realized if I just hit the edge of the key, it doesn't register. I called support and they answered instantly. I'm not sure if I was just lucky or something. Since the laptop was still within the 30 day return window, Kevin from India, offered to send me a new laptop, so I took it. I got the new laptop within five days and it was fine. Overall, I couldn't have asked for a better experience. Well, maybe, maybe if the laptop wasn't broken in the first place. Of course, if I was outside of the return window, I'm pretty sure it would have been much more of a hassle. Let me show you how much I paid just to give you a point of reference. Uh, not this price. I purchased the laptop in November 2022. The holiday sale price was $1090. I have a Capital One uh, Quicksilver credit card. I'm not advertising for them or anything, but I have that card. They happened to have a holiday promotion at the time for 10% cash back on Lenovo purchases. So that's minus 109. And surprisingly, they also gave me the regular 1.5% cash back, so another 18 bucks off. So the total was 963 before tax. I thought the price was pretty good for the specs. Lenovo seems to offer cash back in many places, so definitely check your credit card benefits and uh, do some searching. Hey, have I just saved you a bunch of money? Give me a like and maybe subscribe if you're a programmer. All right, overall, I'm quite happy with this laptop. Performance is good, screen looks great, and battery life is decent. The biggest drawback is the reflections on the screen. Well, what do you think? If you have any specific questions, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching.